poker's legendary champions, next generation stars, and tireless ambassadors of the game, sharing their wisdom and guiding your journey to high achievement on the green felt. This is Tactical Tuesday on Chasing Poker Greatness with your hosts, Brad Wilson and John Chai. What is happening? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Chasing Poker Greatness podcast and Tactical Tuesday. I'm here with John Chai. John, how you doing, sir? Doing good. How are you, Brad? Can't complain. Cannot complain. Just uh, ready to break down a couple of hands that you've played. Do we have a theme for today's yeah, episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to be breaking down some thin value bet spots. Um, these thin value bet spots actually are not <clears throat> they're not thin value bet spots in the in the more like classic sense of the word i guess these thin value bets more border the line of straddle the line of punt and thin value bet usually it's like ah uh, you know is this hand you know usually you're not worried about it being a punt but uh yeah these these hands i'm worried about being a punt okay so are we are we going getting too wild with our value are we pushing the envelope a little bit too much uh why i guess for the listener why, why is this concept so important i mean i think value betting is going to be where you get you generate most of your ev um if you i think one quick cursory way you can double check that is like if you look at the biggest pots that you've ever won um you know just sorting your database by by biggest pots you've won um they're almost always going to be spots where you were value betting or uh, you know, like jamming the river for value and, and you know, a couple of cut or something like that. So I think, you know, if you're going to pick like one part of your game, value betting, bluff catching or bluffing um, and try to figure out which which one of those three actions generates the the biggest part of your win rate, um, you know, I would I would almost certainly guess value betting. So making sure you're doing a good job of that is 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 going to be kind of the, the part of your game where you where you want to make sure you're doing the best job because it's going to be adding the most to your win rate. Yeah, and you know, in general, like when you have a range that has a lot of equity, aka a lot of value, um, you bet a lot. And when you don't have hands that have a lot of equity in your range, you rarely bet. Um, so the value is what drives betting in general. Um, I'll never forget. Actually, I was playing in a home game back in the day when I was basically a full-time online grinder, I was playing a home game and I was just, uh, you know, chit-chatting with somebody that ha- I had never seen before. And they were talking about like how they played online poker and like, you know, they they were essentially an online pro and, you know, we were having a conversation and I got a sense that this player was probably not an online pro, but I wasn't exactly sure. And so uh, I tested him a little and asked him like, what is the most profitable hand in your database uh just like that you that you have like out of out of all the hands that you have you know and he cuz he was saying he had like a 2 or 3 million hand database and he said suited a suited king and i was like yeah you failed the test <laughs> <laughs> like because it is always aces like doesn't matter mm. i mean i guess maybe not in like a database of 20 hands but in any significant uh, sample size, size database. The most valuable hand that you have is pocket aces, and it is not even close. Um, so yeah, like that's a a big indicator, right, as to you know the caliber of player that you are, or what your win rate is, or what you need to upgrade is. How are you playing your value? How are you playing the best hands in your range? Because that is going to more than anything else. Like pe- we we love seeing like the sick bluffs. They make for good TV. But those don't really drive win rate like maxing value does. So, yeah, exceptionally important to get value right. Um, and I would say, too, that, like, if you're going to go over the edge, like, if, if you're going to straddle the line, like, kind of with not value betting enough or overdoing it with value, I would almost always advocate for overdoing it rather than not doing it enough because, like, yeah, I, I think by overdoing it, one good thing about overdoing it is you're all, you have the ability to kind of 
pull it back and finely tune your your value betting system. Um, but if you never do it, if you're always too cautious, um, you're just not going to be great at value betting like over over your poker career, and and that's going to really hold you back and hamstring you if you're looking to, you know, actually be a, a strong, long term, successful poker player. Yeah, and I, I would I would you know I think you can even take that a step further and say that most people are probably not even close to overdoing it when it comes to value betting. Um, you know, when we look at our the wolves that we coach or, or any of the database analysis analyses that we do, like one of the things that we pick out all the time is that um, a lot of players are not doing a good job of thin value betting enough or value betting big enough or whatever it is. And, and, and it makes sense. It's, it's a, it's an uncomfortable thing to do to be at like the, the razor's edge of value betting slash punting and like trying to try to straddle that line, try to, you know, generate the most EV you can by actually finding the thinnest value bets is, is it's an uncomfortable thing to do. It's generally, it's easier to just to check back your, your aces or whatever, and just, you know, win the pot quite frequently when it goes check, check instead of, um, pushing yourself to think about like, hmm, can I actually get called by enough hands here to to justify making this very thin, scary bet? Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's not even like it's not even placing a bet, right? It's like raising with like mm. top pair, top kicker on the river facing like a third. It's yeah. it's finding just finding extra value, um, and you just always have to be on on the lookout for it. And like really a good way for for the listener to test themselves as to whether or not you're you're value betting thinly enough how often do you value cut yourself how often do you value bet and get called by a better hand because if you can't remember the last time that you did it you're almost certainly aren't doing it enough like that's just the reality like if if you're placing a bet on the river um you know and say you get called by 60% worse hands right that's a profitable bet if you bet $100, you get called by 60% worse hands. That means that, you know, you get 60% of 200, uh, whatever that is, uh, 120. Yeah. Um, so it's like plus $20. But that means that you lose 40% of the time, right? Like you're supposed to lose 40% of the time. You're supposed to lose as often as Villains hit a flush draw against your overpair, right? Something along, you know, something along those lines. And like, the, the reality is, is most humans just aren't, and it's not, it's not even close. They're nowhere near, um, reaching that threshold. So anyway, all right, that's our seven minute spiel <laughs> on value betting. And we're going to now dive into some hands and we're actually going to do something that is unprecedented here on Tactical Tuesday. We're going to look at, uh, some GTO wizard, going to look at some solver and see how the solver, uh, maps our hand. So, all right, hand number one, you want to break down the action? Sure. So we're playing uh, five ten no limit. We're five-handed. Uh, the player in middle position, it looks like a, looks to be a reg, opens to $22. I have queens in the big blind. We're about 140 big blinds effective, always going to be three betting queens. Um, so I make it 110 reg in middle position calls. So we go to a jack 8-8 eight, eight rainbow flop with 225 in the middle. Um, again, we're about 130 big blinds effective versus this reg, uh, sizing options on the flop. We can, we can start here. Yeah. Um, I think in general, it's 50% when you three bet hijack, uh, is like generally the preferred size. So Jack eight, eight, I see you bet 50. So it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Betting 30 would be fine too. Like just what about bigger 30, 30 or 50. I don't know. I don't know if that's fine. I think it's something that would have to explore and to really drill down. You know, it's you have some depth here, hijack versus big blind. Um, there's a lot of sort of there's there's and it's a paired board, so there's a lot of variables that make for this being somewhat of a rareish situation. And then when you add on top a seventy percent size, like that's exceptionally rare size yeah. to, to face or use in yeah. a three butt pot. And I'm okay with not having, you know, 15 sizes on the flop. So I, I was just sure. asking about, you know, we yeah, talked yeah. about 30 and a half. So I was wondering if 70 was, is ever something that you do, but yeah, I, I generally, I, I think just 70 could be okay. Too. Intuitively. I think 70s could be better than 50. Yeah. Because that's... yeah, I, I doubt that they're going to shed many extra hands facing 70 mm -hmm. that they, they do facing 50. So essentially they're probably just, uh, 
in, inflexible to size yeah. at 50 or 70. In any case, we have a pretty clear-cut value bet uh, yeah. with queens on the flop, so that's what we do. We go ahead and bet 111 into 225. Uh, the I rag. think another part part of this, by the way, you, you do bet, they call, but one reason why I would much prefer 50 rather than 30 you do you block the gut shots and you you block some of their back doors with the the queen of diamonds which yep. you know would be the primary targets i think when you bet small to right. hope to get called by like or you know just queen 10 of diamonds or king queen of diamonds um, they can still have king queen of spades king queen of clubs but you block queen 10 sure. which isn't great yep. um so anyway you bet for the for the listener, by the way, the board is Jack eight eight, Rainbow, John bet half pot, villain called turns a nine of diamonds. So John has Queen of Hearts, Queen of Diamonds. There's four forty seven in the middle, and they've got about a hundred and ten big blinds left. So quite a lot of moolah. A uh, pretty good turn card in the sense that it doesn't demote our hand and any at all um we still have an overpair um uh turn card is like somewhat interesting in the sense that it completes some straight draws that uh the middle position reg can definitely have fortunately we have two queens which blocks queen 10 which is probably going to be the the main straight draw main maybe the only straight draw that he has that that gets there um some other hands that get promoted are hands like pocket nines um that certainly call half pot on the flop and are now uh have turned a boat um, I think a hand like 10-9 has now improved to a pair and a flush draw. I think, you know, all four combos, or I guess three combos now of 10-9 suited, uh, call the three bet and call half pot on the flop. Um, and then I guess the other big category of hand that that this nine of diamonds opens up for middle position is uh, turn flush draws. Um, so if he does have a hand like, I don't know, ace-10 of diamonds, maybe ace-king of diamonds, I would expect him to four bet that. Um, but, you know, maybe he has, has a hand like that. Um, yeah, has now turned has now turned to flush draw. Um, I think that's that's about everything that's meaningful about this nine of diamonds. Unless you think there's yep. something else, don't think so. I okay. think you you pretty much covered it. Uh, so here on the turn, um, first decision point obviously is to better check. And... Yeah, it still feels like a pretty easy value, but to to me on the turn, um, you know. I just mentioned all the hand categories that are that are going to call. Some of which are better than ours, but a lot of which are, you know, not better than queens and, and are still going to put in money, which is good. Um, mm-hmm. And then there's still obviously the the huge amount of jack x that uh, is not going to fold on this turn. So um, a lot of value hands that I think we can target. Um, a lot of yep. draws that I think we can target with uh, with our overpair. Yeah. So. I actually don't know if this is good enough to overbet, and I was overbet. I just meant bet. Uh, to to bet. Sorry, oh, okay, to, yeah. to bet the turn. I didn't know if this hand was good enough to bet the turn. Um, and we had GTO Wizard open. Uh, I just kind of changed some parameters in the solve. So, uh, to 150 big blinds. I think the depth is going to change things some, and I'm not so sure that the turn is a bet. Okay. Um, it's hard to target. It's hard to target worse hands for three streets to me, like Ace Jack, for instance. Um, really, I would have. If I saw it, if you know, if he turned over his hand and he had Ace Jack, I'd be like, "Oh, nice, bet that jam, <laughs> baby!" Like, yeah, I'm, I'm less convinced that like a hand like uh, Tins is going to call down or Nine Ten or their Jack X. Uh, getting three bet from the big blind mm-hmm. and the hijack, mm-hmm. um, and and the depth definitely is going to throw a wrench into the calculation. Like sure. starting 140 bigs is a lot different, I think, than starting at 100. At 100, I think it's it's you know they're going to have enough like queen jacks, jack tens, tens, nine tens, you know, hands like ace jack that that will call down. I'm not <sighs> so sure that ace jack yeah. just. Call, call, call. So you think like, you know, you think those Jack X's, those Queen Jacks and Jack 10's will call the turn but not call the river. And so what you're thinking about doing right now is deciding if you want to go for that one street of value on the river or on the turn. Well, I'm wondering like how starting deeper affects A, their preflop range. Are they going to call with hands like 8-9 suited, 7-8 suited um, more frequently? 
at 140 bigs than at 100 bigs. Maybe not. I guess a super. I'd expect them to just pure call pinnacle. those hands at both depths. Yeah, gonna call both. Um, I, it's, it's just interesting because yeah, like you're always dead to nines full. The losing an extra forty big blinds when they do have like jacks full, quads, and nines full feels important. Um, as well as like when they turn is straight but that's going to be a rare because you double block it but anyway I, i'm not i'm not so sure about betting the turn personally um i'm on the fence but let's see i thought I it was it would be important to bet the turn to like we just always get stacked by those jack x nines you know pocket eights whatever those those really really good full houses and, and straights and whatnot and do we that's that's the question do we should we hmm so like if we check here and he goes bet jam, should we call off with queens? That's what you're asking. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, in game, that's I, <laughs> my plan was to not fold queens at 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 any point. Maybe that's you know maybe that plan needs amending. But I, I thought that you know if I'm sort of always in jail versus those turn full houses or flop full houses, or whatever flop quads, um, that you know some of those jack x hands are, are not going to bet equity the turn. hands. Hmm? What are the low equity hands? If you like, if you're going to check call and then check call on like. A river deuce. Yeah, yeah. What? Where? 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 Where do the bluffs come from? Where do the low equity hands? It would come have from? to be like the diamond, diamond hand. Maybe like ace ten or you know king queen of clubs, like those those sorts of hands. Um, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Too. But there's like there, there, <laughs> there isn't like this huge region of like low equity hands that I'm excited. Like, ah, oh, nice. Now he has like all these bluffs that I get to call down with like queens and like feel good about it. And if that's the case, should we just value bet queens ourselves? Like, is that more of a reason to actually just value bet our queens than? go the check call route i well i mean you just check call then check fold basically is what i'm what i'm saying yeah okay is, is how the, how the hand would go down right like you would check all the turn and then check fold the river basically or if the turn check through then you know you'd probably on like a blank probably place like a i would imagine you would just get greedy and go like real big on the river maybe just jam the river might not be the most unreasonable. Sure. Right? Yeah, I think jamming the river if it goes check check is it. Basically, well, I mean, what I was trying to get at though is that like, look, if we don't expect them to have a, a big bluffing range on the river, does that or big bluffing range if we check the turn, um, does that mean that we should start thinking about value betting more and you know mm. taking some of the jack x down with us that isn't going to put in their whole stack? Yeah, I. I it's going to hinge on whether or not the jack x calls down. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's that's where most of it's gonna gonna hinge on, and you know went on the long uh, monologue about value betting and kind of the the flip side of value betting is um, <laughs> maxing value for your opponents, <laughs> aka like if you never fold to giant bets and just always call, um, then you're contributing to your opponent's win rate greatly, um, and on the flip side you're contributing to your own your loss demise. rate greatly, <laughs> your own demise. So that's kind of the the interesting like other side of the coin is that um yeah, you also don't want to max villain's value either. So like if you only get called by like better hands when you like bet jam and like they fold Jack X, then I think betting goes like way down in value. Yeah. Um and if you check call the turn and check call the river every time and they have limited bluffs then that's not great either. Yeah. Um, so essentially like the way that I, I would imagine this turn working is being like a very high frequency check with a lot of your strongest hands as well, because you can't just check, um, you, you know, you, you can't just check your weak, weakest hands. You, ha you have to have like some nutted hands in your, your checking range. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much, probably going to check like nines full if you have nines full probably jacks full maybe maybe jacks full if you have jacks full yeah so it sounds like you're sort of landing on like turn check range close to range and then do a lot of 2x jamming on the river yeah that that's that seems like the path that i'm i'm feeling is the best and if they bet the turn and bet the river like i need to see what the river is but i would feel really bad right but when you I check range really when you check range on the turn and they bet turn and river you you have lots of very i've got hands call, call yeah. with yeah right, right. 
And I don't necessarily need a lot of hands that can call both bets because a turn's not going to get bet yeah. all the time. It's right. only going to get bet like, you know, something like 35 to 50% of the time. Something right. like I that. mean, like, so, we can just, I think we can distill it down to, like, we don't expect them to have very many low equity turn bet river jams. And if they don't have very many turn bet river jams, that means they're, they're not doing that turn bet river jam all that frequently. So correct. It's not like correct. we need tons and tons of hands every time that happens. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Cool. Oh, this is a, all right. A big departure from where I thought the this conversation <laughs> was going to go because I was going to ask about jamming maybe the worst river of all time. Yeah. And yeah. So John bets big on the turn. Um, and the river double pairs the board. So Jack Jack eight eight. Uh, there, villain has eighty, eighty six big blinds left. SPRs, you know, around like eighty percent or so. <laughs> Spoiler alert: John went for it. Um, I assume targeting like tens and nine ten. Yeah, tens nine ten. Um, even like yeah, I don't know like how much other. 9x he has. I guess 910 is probably probably the only one that, that makes sense. <laughs> what other um, 9x do they have? You better have fun on the bluff. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, sign trying of to, clubs? Trying to, trying to expand his bluff catching yeah. range by as much as I can. Yeah, you're, I know. You're trying to cook the books. Trying to cook the books. Hey, um, this, hand, this hand just it, it feels quite... It, it feels punty to me. Yeah, um, that's what I was worried about. Like you're, you're on the other end of the... You've gone too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um... So, we haven't like, even shown the result. We're just yeah, already like doing. We're already like, like, like out of out of funeral for my hand. Yeah, you, you you get called by Ace Jack of Clubs, which does make some sense. Um, don't know what they do on the river if they don't river a boat, but we do know what they do when they river a boat. They call. Yep. Um, so well done. Let's see what the wizard the wizard has to say about this hand. Voila. All right. By the way, in the description bar here on YouTube, if you would like to sign up for GTO Wizard, I have an affiliate link. You can get 10% off, I believe, um, your first month when you click through. So gtowizard.com. Check the, the the description bar. Find the affiliate link. Click through. Do all the things. Um, I really do like GTO Wizard. It's Yeah, it's so convenient. It's so convenient, um, so convenient. So here's the spot um, on the flop. So this is at 150 bigs? 150, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're betting the flop um, very often. and <laughs> every, every size is okay. <laughs> every size is okay, and primarily half pot is being used. So we're going to go with... Nice, okay. You nailed it. Nailed the flop size. Um and yeah, villain's calling with most things. Yeah. <laughs> Not folding a ton. Turn is the nine of diamonds, and the wizard now wants mm. a lot of checking. Mm. Yeah, the range check on the turn. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh when it does bet. Man, this King ten suited, ace ten. Yep. So king ten, ace ten, and then um, some of your eights. It's checking eight nine mm. more than it's betting. Yeah. Checking ten eight more than it's betting. Uh, betting seven eight suited, a ton. Checks pocket jacks. Checking pocket jacks. It's betting about ten percent or so, but yeah, in general, look. There's your. Your lower equity bet is king queen, yeah, um, which I think makes a lot of sense. Nice. But yeah, I mean, bas basically, like when you're when you're checking a ton, like like if the intuition is that it, the turn is a range check, um, then yeah, you're not going to be betting even your nutted hands at full frequency sure. in general. You're, sure. you're betting them like fractionally. Yep. But um, yeah, so here at 150 bigs, the wizard says. Don't do it, John. Don't bet the turn. Let's just let's just do it. Let's just say. Uh, well, Queens does bet. Yeah, we get about. We, it's a nice thing about solvers, right? You can you can do everything low frequency yeah. and At super low frequency. I don't always do this with Queens. I only do it <laughs> seven percent of the time. Yeah. Well, now on the river. Um, sorry, 
bro. So, wait, wait, wait. You got to hover over the box and make sure there isn't like a little sliver of red in there or something. That, that... No, no red. Hey, hey, queen of hearts, queen of clubs. I don't think <laughs> oh. that was my combo, but. <laughs> queen of hearts, queen of clubs. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and going all in is worth 10 big blinds less than checking. In a best case scenario. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it looks like the thinnest that it's going is with kings which frankly makes a lot of sense okay, well I, I just like to point out that going all in is still positive expected value with queens yeah, even though you're not it actually it, so. has no jam well i mean it's hard to lose right like just the pot's so big and you, you have fold equity when you jam <laughs> with queens um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might fold kings. <laughs> it uses the all in size zero <coughs> percent of the time. Uh I think that's really interesting. Solely a third. If I'd bet the turn, uh you know, jamming just seemed like the most natural one of the most natural things to do. Um given that the SPR is, you know, a little bit less than one. Uh it's really interesting to see that GTO Wizard is more advocating for a, a block on the river yeah and when you check the turn and the turn checks through the river's a jack your size is about 70 percent mm, so uh, like not too oh, extreme yeah, interesting that's not even half right that's a third yeah 30 into 50 so 60 percent Yes, still not jamming. One last sim request before we maybe sure. move on to the next hand. Could we just see what happens on the turn at 100 bigs and confirm that the checking frequency actually goes up when the SPR is higher? So here is Ooh, okay. the turn. The checking frequency at 150, 150 bigs was about 85%. It drops to 63.8 when we are yeah. playing at 100 bigs. And we can see Queens is now majority betting instead of small percentage. Interestingly, time. Kings was almost... Actually, no. They were all fractional. So it, betting frequency went down. Yeah. I, or went up, rather. Um, as we reduced it, and queens went up significantly. Gotcha. So you're you're go. betting most most of queens at 100 bigs, checking most of queens at 150. So. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, sorry, we just have to finish this up. Does it jam the river after betting queens? <laughs> on, the, on the jack? On the jack. All right, let's see. It does. Ah, nice. About 60% of the time or so. But... Actually, the size is not all in. The I know. Size Again, it's like, not all in. The size is very, very small. Um, what is 17? I don't even know what 17.5 and a 75 is. Uh, and then the other size is 5 into... Oh, no, 5 into 50. 5 into 50. So 10%. <laughs> uh that's why it's a wizard. Ah. Finds it the ten percent river bet. Yeah. All right. So that's it. Bet the turn. Bet ten percent on the river. Unless you're deep. Check the turn. And unless you're deep. And then bet um, seventy on the river. Yeah. Going all in. The EV of going all in is four big blinds worse than just checking mm -hmm. all of your queens. By the way, so just want to point out. Punt confirmed. I can't get away from the punt, regardless of whether it's. 100 bigs or 150 bigs yeah you uh you just you can't get away from it it's <laughs> it's, it's it's not great um so on that high note for john's confidence and career aspirations <laughs> let's take a break and come back with the rest of this episode stick around are you a lone wolf searching for the ultimate pack the CPG Wolf Program is a close-knit brotherhood hell-bent on one thing only, chasing poker greatness. 
Powered by bleeding edge wolf strats and led by Coach Brad and his lieutenants, CPG wolves are systematically prepared for almost any spot they'll encounter on the green felt. If you want to plug into an elite team and have a step-by-step -step game plan to realize your full poker potential, you can apply at cpgwolves.com. Space is limited, and the pack is only as strong as its weakest member. So only the hungriest, grittiest, and most driven will be accepted into the program. Applications are open at cpgwolves.com. All right. Welcome back from the break. Had an abnormally long hand number one. We actually had three hands on the docket today, but... During the break, we reviewed the second hand, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna let you know, listener John, he bungled it. Um, he's very demoralized. Dude, they're probably the they're like, wow, you you showed a hand where he just absolutely punts the river with club pocket queen, just jams into top boat. But there's like a hand that you're too embarrassed to show. You're too embarrassed to show us now, or like he bungled so no, badly we can't. It, it, we, we it can't was for it. you know, it was for speed purposes of the episode. But we can show it. We can show it real quick. Just for fun. So John opens a six of hearts, gets three bet, goes ahead and four bets. What ifs? Um, villain calls. They're actually, how deep are you? Like 130 again? Yeah. A little bit deeper than normal, but nothing crazy. Yep. Uh, he bets a fifth on do straight eight with one heart. Villain calls. Turn is a six, giving him second pair. Goes check, check. Rivers an eight. Um, it goes check, and John, in all of his thin value bet glory, goes ahead and check behind ah. and beats ace queen. And yeah, that's it. Come on, son. Dude, I mean, just we for the go. audience, I, I told Brad during the break that I shut my session down after not <laughs> value betting this spot because for 14 seconds I knew I was like so sure that I should value bet, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And once I saw that, it was definitely was just a clear value bet and i probably missed value from a hand that likely would have bluff caught a lot of different river sizes i was too sad to continue playing well the good news is that you do have a value betting range here um you'll value bet trips plus so well done <laughs> well done overpair overpair <laughs> yeah you probably bet the turn with an overpair so you you probably don't have many of them in your range Honestly. All right, give me another break to think about what other hands you I would don't. Play. You don't four bet nines. You don't four bet tens. You probably don't even four bet jacks. So you probably bet queens on the turn. Um, I mean, my God, you just bet queens on a much worse board than than this and jam the river. So trips plus it's, it's, is your value bet. Really, it, it really, it should <laughs> tell you something that I feel much more embarrassed about this hand than the queens hand, even though I. <laughs> I lost like fifteen hundred dollars or something in the queen's hand, and actually won three seventy here. <laughs> yes, and again for the listener, that's how you know you're doing it right when you feel like death because you check back and won a pot but missed value. That's that's how you know that you care an appropriate amount um, about maximizing your value. Not enough to actually like bet. <laughs> that, that would be the appropriate amount to care but <laughs> i probably checked back here and was like man i really hope he has nines so that i don't have to stop playing because if, if he has a hand that's worse than a six i have to stop playing if he has nines and i lose that's you know i can keep going <laughs> yeah the listener is going to want to know you know why this is why uh this is not a great check back um i think villains bet their over pairs quite often on the river here like most always they bet their nines and tens probably with like a block size um but anyway moving on i mean even moving if they on, don't do that right like they're still i'm still gonna get called by ace queen when i bet the river i'm still gonna get called by i don't know probably a lot of ace highs yeah if, <sighs> if the listener if you're if you're wondering why we're we're rambling and went over on on the hand number one it's because of the rider strike guild we're you know <laughs> We we lost we we lost our writers in this ultra <laughs> high production YouTube series, um, so we're we're struggling now. John, break down this hand that. So five hundred zoom sure this time. I'm but, sure uh, it's going to go well. You're you're just crushing it so far today. 
<laughs> we got a button open to two and a half big blinds. I'm in the uh, big blind with pocket kings, king of spades, king of diamonds, easy three bet, button calls. Get a queen, queen, four, two diamond flop. Um, 122.50 in the middle. I have 333 behind. I'm the effective stack. Uh, set to just start C betting here. Again, go with the half pot size. Don't know if there's a ton to talk about. Thank God we're actually at 100 bigs effective instead of 150. <laughs> so hopefully I won't make a humongous turn error. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh, turns dumb. deuce of hearts. So we have double flush draw, queen, queen, four, deuce, diamonds, and hearts. Um, yeah, I think there's. I think betting is probably just preferred here. Okay. Sizing is interesting. Yeah, we have a, a kind of a funky SPR. I have about one and a half pot left behind. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering, I'm thinking about check. Just the merits of check. Merits of check, you can check jam. Um can jam the river facing check back. Can jam, jam the river facing check back. Uh, I do think that if Phil and bet the turn, you would check jam. Um, I actually thought about the merits of just jamming the turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's I, I option think, reasonable too. Yeah, I think that's that's on the table. I think there's a lot of different ways that you can go. Um, I suspect that you would like to place the last bet on the turn if if possible. Um, betting and essentially getting like, jammed on. <laughs> Not getting jammed on, but well, getting jammed on isn't great. But uh, villains get to realize their flush draw equity. Like, if based, I bet, if I bet like half pot here, yeah, like, and I don't, uh, yeah, I, I think like their flush draws just get to play pretty perfectly. Um, I'm not sure. I, I think you could go a bunch of different directions. I'm. I'm just on the fence about all of it. I think I, I picked think the dumb can... size on the turn. You bet a third. No, half. Oh, you bet half. I, like, doesn't this just feel like the worst of all worlds? Like, great. Now if they yeah, have now a queen, you talk about just... all the options. Yeah, yeah. Like, honestly, I'm kind of leaning towards check, um, and then check jamming, but yeah, when you say that, like. As soon as you said that, in the other hand, too, and as soon as you said check the turn, I saw the two x river jam. As soon, you know, when you just start to think about what happens when it goes to check check, and I really like that option. Again, I really like that option here. I think villain is going to have a lot of turn checkbacks that are going to be tempted to bluff catch the river. All the pocket pairs under queens, um, maybe even like a four if he has a hand like four five or ace four, um, maybe even some like ace highs. Like I, I you know, that wouldn't like shock me if I. 2x the river and got called by you know ace jack or something like that um i think it's essentially the same thing as 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 a four um so yeah i mean i also that you think it's a lot checking like, the turn here too I, I i really like it i actually think it's a lot safer to check the turn too even yeah. though like we do let flush draws over realize when they do have a flush draw um and they check behind i think they are going to stab some but they're going to check some too right i think that's that's not great but I think that like when the turn goes check check and the river's even a flush completer, it's so much safer to jam mm -hmm. than betting the turn and jamming the river mm -hmm. because their queen X tends to bet facing a check on the turn here. And so like when they check back, queen X is kind of removed. Yep. Um a, a lot of it's removed from their range. So like even on like, you know, an eight of diamonds or eight of hearts. I think you can just safely 1.5x jam and you'll be totally fine. Yeah. So you think Queen X gets removed when they check back the turn and you also think that maybe some flush draws get removed when they check back the turn? Yeah, gotcha. I think so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I agree with all um, that. I, I wish that I... If I could go back and play this hand again, yeah, I would check the turn and just check jam over a uh, turn float or 1.5x the river facing check check. Yeah, and if... um. If you bet, I don't think a queen ever raises either. So there's no removal when you bet and they call. Sure, sure. Yeah. Like I don't think a queen would raise either. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So we pick the dumb size. 
Get called. <laughs> <laughs> the trifecta. Hey, maybe maybe I was doing the thing where I picked the dumb size on purpose to get called by a wider range, and you know, blah blah blah. You know, That's I, I have to I'm... say for the for the tactical Tuesday listener, last week after our show, I was a little sad, and for like all the most selfish reasons that that you could be sad about, like halfway proud, halfway sad, proud because the king queen hand, you just you played it better than I would have, and. That made me sad, but also proud because, you know, you're my friend and you're my student and just seeing you play a hand better than me <laughs> made me feel a little envious. Um, this week, you've completely redeemed yourself and I can say I, I feel proud of you for last All week. Right. I'm going to be I'm going to be <laughs> honest. I, I noticed that you seemed a little bit down after that last Tactical Tuesday. So I deliberately <laughs> just punted two hands and <laughs> brought them to Tactical Tuesday so that, you know, you could at least. You know, feel like you have something left to coach me. What a good guy! <laughs> what, a, what a good guy John is. See, see, see how just what a part-time great poker player, is. part-time therapist. <laughs> uh, all right. So you bet half pot. They call. Um, we get the eight on the river. Eight of spades. So hey, both, no flush. Both complete flushes brick. And let me guess, you jam. Yep. Nice. Oh, nice oh, oh, trips. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you jam ace queen calls and, you know, another perfectly played hand in today's <laughs> episode of Tactical Tuesday. <laughs> uh, the the rare O for three. Or I don't even know if that's rare, but. <laughs> so what did, like, listener, what did you learn about thin value betting today? I'm not sure, <laughs> but wh- whatever it was, is don't, don't do what John has don't done. Don't do today. it. Don't thin value bet. <laughs> No, I think That's that I mean I, I I came into this episode just thinking that I would mostly be asking about like the river jam, thinking like, oh, most of the time we're gonna spend talking about the river and, and if this is too thin or, or whatever. But um I thought the turn conversation was at least for me, it's gotta be like a huge takeaway and, and by far like the most enlightening part of this episode. I didn't even consider checking range um on in the first hand with Queens. I think this one maybe I, you know, if I'd sat with it longer, I might have been able to to come up with that but you know just you mentioning checking range on the turn and all the good things that can happen how easy the hand is to play on the river even with an spr over one um and this hand you know not being you know just if we face turn float we can still jam kings so just like not being scared of like you know what's going to happen downstream when we when we check kings um yeah that's that was a, a huge huge takeaway for me from this episode so really glad we we talked about these two hands even though it wasn't what i expected to talk about also it involved quite a bit of shame on my end <laughs> but you know that's the way you get better that's the way you learn and, and hopefully stop making these stupid plays <laughs> yeah um if in most people's case you know if you can't look back at the version of yourself from a year ago and feel a little bit of shame then you're probably not doing it right you're probably not progressing enough um so you know john just iterates faster than most people because he feels shame <laughs> from and three days ago. Three days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Is that me? I used to do that stuff on, on Wednesday. Like. <laughs> yeah, that's how quickly he progresses, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what a great student. <laughs> all right, that's all I got. Um, once again, if you want to check out GTO Wizard, click through the link in the description bar. And that's all I've got for you this week on Tactical Tuesday. See you next week. Peace. I'll try to play better. Thanks for listening to Chasing Poker Greatness. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. Go to ChasingPokerGreatness.com to get the newsletter. Join the Greatness Village community, book a coaching session, or dive into the latest data-driven poker courses. Follow the show on Twitter at CPG Podcast. 